What would happen if the USA and North Korea went to war without any allies and nukes involved? In a real world scenario, it would be almost impossible, as we should take into account also South Korea, China and the US allies, but for the sake of a 1 vs 1 comparison, we will let everything aside except these two countries and analyze in depth the possible outcomes. When we look at the troops of the countries involved, we see that on paper, according to globalfire.com, North Korea seems to be on top as a ground power, especially for its enormous number of soldiers, enormous numbers of paramilitary, light vehicles and tanks, and numerous ships. Meanwhile the USA is undeniably a naval and air superpower, due to the USA having to take care of its political interests thousands of miles away with shores. When we consider the economies of the two countries, comparing North Korea with the USA by GDP is like comparing a grain of sand with a 100 miles long beach. North Korea, not only by economic metrics, but also by the portrayal notoriously brought to our attention by the numerous North Korean defectors, such as Yeonmi Park, confirms or in some cases highlights the hardships that the North Korean citizens are currently going through. Let aside the peasantry, North Korean soldiers are often malnourished and short, with obsolete weapons, few ammunition and just enough fuel to operate tank tanks during a parade. When we take a closer look at the recent relationship with its close Chinese neighbor, North Korea's imports of oil decreased significantly from $600 million to $30 million a year, and therefore most citizens have to rely on wood for their basic needs, as North Korea itself, similar to South Korea, does not have any meaningful oil reserves that they can exploit. North Korea, in this situation, would lack both the food to operate the people, soldiers, and the fuel to operate the light vehicles like trucks, or heavy light tanks, aircraft, submarines, etc. North Koreans are already in a constant battle to survive. A real war would immediately bend the country down to its knees. The single big advantage that North Korea would enjoy in this scenario is its distance from the US. The US, depending on the fleet it will choose to operate, could get near to North Korea with a significant fleet just in 9 days from the west coast, or 20 days from the east coast, 20-30 by circumnavigating Africa or through the Suez Canal. North Korea would have no option but to wait for the US and play defensively, since even its submarines are not nuclear, and therefore North Korea would have no option but to stick close to its shores for supplies. Meanwhile on the US side, the island of Guam could play a key role as a storage area for supplies or by using it to launch bombers supported by air-to-air -air refueling. After the first month, the US Navy would be probably prepared with 6 carrier strike groups, 80 ships in total of which one-third submarines, equipped with Tomahawk and 400 aircraft. The US would probably not carry any amphibious assault ships in the first stages, as landing on North Korea would be just too risky, limiting its intervention in continuous cruise missile attacks and bombardments on strategic targets all around the country, military bases, ports, railways, ammo depots, artillery and North Korean sound systems. Some weeks later, the US US could get closer hunting North Korean ships and bombarding Pyongyang. An invasion from the east may appear unlikely, as the topography of North Korea is quite mountainous in the east, and plain in the west. Meanwhile in North Korea, every resource would be gathered and spent to keep the enormous army alive, and this could lead the government to force the farmers outside of Pyongyang to give their food to the government, causing mass starvation among the peasantry. After some weeks of massive bombardments and clear US technological superiority, the morale of North Korean troops could suddenly either go up to save the country and their ideology, like in the Vietnam War, fighting until the end, or the opposite, creating disorder among the ranks and possible uprisings. After two months, North Korea would run out of fuel, and most of the country would just stop, making it extremely vulnerable to US air bombardments. At this point the US could either choose to land troops, but that could turn into a massacre, or play the North Korean way, dropping propaganda leaflets, magazines, cassettes, mp3, dvds, a smartphone full of videos and movies in Korean to present the world outside of North Korea, and food to keep other people in the villages alive. These items would be inevitably seized by the North Korean army, but it's impossible for the people not to be influenced by these new ideas, and so the army if they come in contact with this material. Moreover, if the army seizes the humanitarian aid that the people need, the people will see them as the enemy. At this point there could be just two outcomes. The people will either revolt against the government, and this leads to a temporary anarchy because they see the inability of the supreme leader to keep the Americans away, as he is considered a god, or either they will choose to stick with their ideology, but this would inevitably continue to cause mass starvation among the North Korean lines, even soldiers pushing the people to seek a change. If the first option becomes reality, the US could start supporting the uprisings by providing weapons and food and probably landing 20 to 30,000 soldiers every two months by amphibious assault ships or by parachuting some more marines every week stationed in Guam. 
In the second case, the bombardments could lead to one of the most horrific moments in history, with tens or hundreds of thousands of soldiers lost on the North Korean side, and millions of civilians because of starvation, in an attempt for the US to change North Korea's ideology until a democracy with fair elections is feasible. A sustained invasion with troops on the ground seems extremely unlikely. The USA would lose too many lives and also equipment, equipment that are worth many times over the North Korean economy. And a friend, like modern-day South Korea, is much more appealing, as North Korea too, potentially, can have a different future.